Welcome to episode 13 of Live It Out with the Planning Woman. I'm your host, Jennifer Booth, founder of The Planning Woman and creator of The Planning Woman's 30-Day Scripture Journals. I'm so glad you could join me today for this episode. It is my sincerest hope that you will be encouraged by what you hear to be able to live a life of real purpose with a real plan that helps you to experience real peace. Today, I want to talk about legacy, specifically how we can leave a legacy that impacts the world in a positive way. Dictionary.com defines legacy as anything handed down from the past as from an ancestor or a predecessor. I've shared in the past um, on different episodes about various life changes that I and my family have been going through over the last few months. While these changes have not been easy, I know that they are a necessary part of life. Parents get older and need more help. Our children grow up and move away from home. God doesn't intend for us to stay the same for our whole lives. Without change, we would not be able to do the work God has designed for each of us to do. Throughout all of these changes, I have begun thinking about the topic of legacy especially with my son leaving for college this year and the fact that our daughter will be following soon behind him in a couple of years, which will leave my husband and I as empty nesters. Even though they are almost grown and on their own completely, I know that it's not too late to continue to shape the legacy that I hope to leave behind for them. I have to admit, though, sometimes I do feel like it's too late. In fact, this whole summer before my son left, I just kept wondering, have I taught him enough? Um, Is he strong enough in his faith to be able to withstand pressures at school? I just had all kinds of thoughts and even some regrets of things I didn't get to do with him or didn't take the time to do with him while I had him at home. But I know that it's okay and that there is still some time to continue to shape and mold him in a positive way. You know, it would be logical to think that we just have those 18 years to shape and mold our kids in a positive way. And in some ways that's true. But until we take our last breath, we can leave, live our lives in such a way that we can continue to impact our kids and future generations beyond them. My family took a vacation to New Orleans a few years ago. And one day while touring this city, we walked through an old cemetery. Now, if you've ever been to New Orleans, you'll know that the city is in a low-lying area that's prone to flooding. And if you've never been, then you only need to think back to Hurricane Katrina a few years ago and all the flooding that took place then. Because of the propensity to flood, when someone dies and they're buried in New Orleans, they are buried in a crypt above the ground. As we walked through this cemetery and saw all of these crypts, there were probably hundreds, if not a thousand of them, in this one small cemetery, I thought about where I might be buried when my life on earth comes to an end. No one likes to think about their own death. Even as a Christian, I sometimes struggle with the idea that I'm going to die one day. But because I know death is inevitable, I've given some thought to the legacy that I want to leave behind. I believe to leave a legacy that is God-honoring to those who come behind us, we must open and be open to following God's purpose for our lives. I'm a firm believer that our main purpose is to glorify Him throughout all our lives. From birth to death, everything we do should bring glory and honor to Him. But I also believe he has other purposes for us during different seasons of our lives. So I really think legacy starts with purpose. What do you want people to remember about you when you die? Do you want them to remember the good things you did or how much money you had or gave away to charity? What would it be like if we lived in such a way that our lives told the story of God? Two men in the Bible stand out to me as examples to show how our lives could be remembered. The first is Jehoram, who was a king in Judah in the Old Testament. Scripture records that he did not follow the Lord or his ways as his father had done, 
In fact, when he first became king, he strengthened his position as king by killing all of his brothers. Second Chronicles 21.20 has this to say about his life. He passed away to no one's regret. Can you imagine how awful his life must have been if no one regretted that he had died? I certainly don't want to be remembered that way, do you? Jehoram reminds me of people who leave a legacy of hatred, violence, abuse, or neglect. And let's be honest here, I'm sure that we can all think of someone that when they died, we were not really that sad they were gone. In fact, their death may have brought relief. And maybe they didn't leave a legacy of violence or abuse or things like that, but maybe their life was just filled with hate and negativity and never had anything positive to say. So I think we've all had people in our lives or knew of people like that, that um, when their life was done, we were really not all that sad to see them go. On the other hand, we have David, who was also a king, but his life turned out remarkably different than Jehoram's. Despite many failures and shortcomings, David loved God and did his best to live and rule as God wanted him to. Acts 13.36 says, For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. David served God's purpose in his own generation. That's the kind of life for which I want to be remembered. This description of David reminds me of my friend and mentor, Monica, who passed away several years ago. She was a wise, tender-hearted, and kind woman, but most of all, she loved Jesus with all her life. Monica became a quadriplegic after an illness suddenly attacked her body. The last few years of her life left her bedridden or confined to a special wheelchair. Most people might give up when faced with such circumstances, but not Monica. She had a sign in her hospital window that said, I serve an awesome God. She did not live out the rest of her life in complacency or defeat. She took every opportunity to minister to others and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Monica pressed on to the ultimate goal of knowing Jesus and making him known to others. Because she knew her life on earth was limited, she made sure everyone she came in contact with heard about Jesus. Monica adapted to the plans and purpose God had for her final season of life. Monica left a legacy of unselfish devotion to her Savior and is still impacting the lives of others today through her story. That's the kind of legacy that I want to leave. Not so that I will be made famous, even after my death, but that God would become famous because of how I lived my life. I believe the best legacy we can leave behind is one that will impact and grow God's kingdom. David reminds us in Psalm 115.1 that really all glory belongs to God. He says, Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your faithful love because of your truth. So if we think back to David's life and how he lived out God's purposes for him in his own generation, then we need to think about how we can live out God's purposes for us in our generation. If we can live out those purposes that God has for us, then surely we will leave a legacy behind that brings glory and honor to God. So how do we go about living out those purposes? Well, I think that serving God's purpose in your generation involves being intimately acquainted with God and His Word. So let's walk through three different ways that we can become more intimately acquainted with God. The first is to spend time daily with Him. Read from the Bible regularly to understand how God has been at work in the past and to understand how He is at work right now. Use God's Word to lead you in your daily life choices. Get involved in a small group Bible study where you can dig deep into Scripture and be encouraged by others. Just yesterday, the Bible study I've been attending at my church started up again for this fall semester. I have been involved with this group in some way um, over the last 18 years. 
And I love all the ladies that I've met through this group. And I always feel that my study is enhanced because I get to hear the experiences of others and how they are using the things that we are learning um, to grow in their relationship with Christ that make me think of my own situations and how I can be more faithful to him and grow deeper. So I encourage you to find a local group you can get plugged into for regular Bible study and fellowship. A second way we can become more intimately acquainted with God is to pray. Ask God to show you opportunities around you in which he wants you to become involved. He is already at work in this world. Um, In fact, I just had this conversation yesterday with some of the ladies at Bible study that um, God's always at work and we just need to be aware of where he's at work and join him. It's kind of the thing, uh, principle that we learned from the Experiencing God Bible study many years ago from Henry Blackaby, that God is always at work and we are to join him in his work. It's not like we need to start something new. We just need to see where he is. So when you pray and ask God to show you opportunities around you where he wants you to become involved, he'll show you and um, give you opportunities to serve him. Regular prayer that is not just a laundry list of I want or please bless will result in an intimate relationship with the father where he can show you what he wants you to do. Tell God of your desire to follow him and his purposes for your life and ask him to reveal the specific purpose he has for you right now. He's not trying to hide it from you, even though it does feel like it sometimes. But I promise if you'll ask him to reveal to you what you need to do, he will answer. Okay, and a third way that we can become more intimately acquainted with God is just to act. When you feel the prompting of God's Holy Spirit to act, do it. Many times we'll be asked to do something that's out of our comfort zones. Actually, a lot of times, most likely. I feel like most everything God asks me to do is not in my comfort zone totally. While there may be some things that I'm familiar with or have skills in, he often asks me to do things that stretch me and grow me. However, if we will place our trust in God, he will help us do what he wants us to do. In my opinion, the most worthwhile life you can live is one that points others to Jesus. Anything else will fall short. I don't know about you, but I want to be remembered as a woman who followed hard after Jesus. I don't want to um, give the illusion that I am perfect and because I'm not, because I know I won't do it perfectly, but I want to give it my best shot and do the best I can. So in order to do that, I've got to be wise about the actions I choose to take. Because you see, what we choose to do today can affect the lives of others tomorrow. And that's kind of a heavy thought to grasp, that the things I choose to do today can affect those who come behind me tomorrow or next year or even 50 or 100 years from now, should the Lord allow us to still exist on this earth. And um, But our choices do make that big of an impact. So I want my choices to be intentional and made with the understanding that I can affect the future for the good or the bad. As I mentioned earlier, I want to leave a legacy that honors God and points to Jesus. So I've thought about a few ways I can live my life that will reflect this desire. Maybe some of these ideas will speak to you as well. So I ask myself, how is my social media interaction? Do I constantly put down others publicly, even in veiled posts that don't mention anyone my name? Am I always critical? Or do I reflect the love of Christ and share what he's doing in my life? Do I share, um, show that I care about others by interacting with them in a positive way? As far as being a church member, am I an effective church member? Do I criticize and complain when things aren't done the way I think they should be done? Or do I jump in and help out where needed using the gifts and talents with which God has blessed me? What about just my everyday 
relationships and interactions with people? Am I gracious and kind? Or do I demand my own way? Am I a good neighbor? Am I sharing about Jesus consistently? Or am I hiding that I'm a Christian? Do I love my family and put their needs above mine? Or do I do what I want to do instead? I'm grateful for my parents, grandparents, and other relatives who have left a rich spiritual legacy for me. Because of their legacy, I know what it means to live for Jesus and have a life that glorifies God. And I hope and pray I can leave the same kind of legacy for my kids and future descendants. So what about you? What kind of legacy are you leaving? Will people not even mourn when you're gone, like Jehoram? Or will you have fulfilled God's purposes for your generation, like David did, when your life is over? It's a lot to think about, I know. It is definitely a heavy topic that, in the busyness of life, we don't always give a lot of thought to. And before you know it, days, weeks, months, years have flown by, and um, we haven't been proactive in thinking about the legacy that we want to live, leave, live out and leave. Um, So I just want to encourage you to think about that. Um, What kind of legacy are you going to leave to those who come behind you? And ask God to help you, you know, have a vision for what that would be. And um, to begin to be intentional about how you live your life each day. Maybe you struggle knowing for sure what God has called you to do in this season of your life. And I'd love to visit with you about that. Drop me an email at theplanningwoman at gmail.com and let me know your struggles with finding your purpose. Perhaps a few life coaching sessions could help you achieve clarity. Or maybe I can direct you to some other sources and resources that um, could help you in this area. And as always, feel free to contact me through email anytime or connect with me on social media at facebook.com slash theplanningwoman or Instagram.com slash The Planning Woman. I'd love to hear from you. Well, that's all I have for this week. Until next time, I hope you have a great week. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Goodbye.